Hey, I'm Kai, and as you can probably tell by the thumbnail, I got unlucky. Today I'm going to be doing a sort of re-review of the Fractal FM3 after owning it for two weeks. Before we start, I would like to say, Fractal users, if there's anything I'm missing or any tips or advice you can give me on the Fractal, I'm more than happy to listen to anyone out. I'm really just looking to absorb all information on this unit now. To keep things fresh and exciting, I'm going to be peppering in some more of these stock presets throughout this video, as well as my own preset towards the end. The guitar I'm using in this video is my Balaguer Woodman Semi Custom. This guitar has a 26.5 inch scale length and is currently tuned down to drop A sharp. So let's get right in and talk about the screen. I'm going to give a brief rundown of the situation. I purchased my FM3 for about £1,070, which is just about £200 less than buying a new one here in the UK. After a week though, the screen was completely wrecked. I was just flicking through some presets and stuff and all of a sudden there were these awful vertical lines on the screen and the main display wasn't showing anything at all. I hit up G66, who were the fractal resellers in Europe, to see if I had any sort of warranty claim with this thing and unfortunately not because my unit was purchased in Turkey. So I had basically nothing here. Now I shelled out £220 for the repair, which is heart wrenching to go through just a week after purchasing the unit, however the repair shop were second to none. I reported the issue on Tuesday, they sent a courier out to pick up the fractal the same day, they fixed it on Wednesday and it was back with me by the end of the day on Thursday. Seriously impressive support here. I think there may be a potential that this failure was my fault. I mentioned in my previous video that my whole studio, room, whatever you want to call it, flooded-ish. I left the window wide open during a torrential rainstorm and pretty much all of my gear got soaked. The Fractal FM3 was up on my desk out the way and it only had a couple of light splashes on the screen and I sort of thought nothing of it. Now it had been running absolutely fine for about a week before the screen went, like after the water, so I would be surprised if it was the water that caused the damage, but it may just be that it took a while to seep through the unit. Ultimately, it is what it is. I've paid for the repair, I've got the unit back, everything's working again for now. I think if I was using this unit live, I would 100% invest in some sort of splash guard or screen protector or something like that, because if that amount of water broke the screen, then it's a very serious issue. If that is the case, be very careful with this unit around water. I did notice a new issue pop up around the foot switch screens, but this may be an unrelated firmware issue. They were sort of looping around and off center, it's very strange to look at. Now with all of that screen nonsense out of the way, let's get onto some happier topics and talk about my general fractal experience after two weeks. I mentioned previously that the learning curve was super easy and I do still believe this to be the case. I can't say I've gone that much deeper into the rabbit hole because I'm still experimenting with so many of the stock amps and stock cabinets that I haven't really had a chance to get into more of the advanced features, but I have been trying out a couple of the advanced parameters on the amp tab especially. Things like the speaker impedance curves as well as the built-in boost on the amp section. I've been really enjoying both of these. I did start messing around with the block library, including downloading some off of the Fractal website from John Petrucci, Steve Vai, and Leon Todd. I've also added in some of my own favorite block settings so that I can call them up at any point. For instance, on the amp block, I saved my Brit 800, as well as my Deluxe Verb and my Rev Generator. These are all just so that I can call them up quickly whenever I want to quickly build a preset. I've tried a couple of new functionality based things with the Fractal since my last video, one of the main ones being expression pedals. Now Fractal handles expression pedals so well, being able to calibrate them from the menu of the Fractal makes this an absolute dream to use. 
I had a bunch of issues getting the Line 6 HX1 to calibrate with my expression pedal, but Fractal just makes this a breeze. There are a million different options of what you can do with the expression pedal. You can set up the exact curve of the sweep, whether you want it linear or logarithmic. You can set up auto engage. You can assign it to pretty much any parameter. It goes so deep and I've barely scraped the surface of it. Really, I've only used it for wah and whammy so far. Another thing I've picked up on since my last video is the Fractal Tuner. This is a fantastic tuner that works really well. It's not quite up to the standards of my Peterson Strobo Stomp, it doesn't really react quite as fast, but the Fractal Tuner is no slouch whatsoever. One of the best features I've learned so far is the pin feature in FM3 Edit. Being able to pull up the list of amps, for instance, and then pin them so that I can quickly pick between different amps without it loading straight into the preset has been absolutely clutch. Similarly, the target feature, also in FM3 Edit, uh, if you press this target button, it takes you straight to the amp that you have selected. This is great if you're running through an amp with multiple different channels that you'd like to flick between. Now, on a similar note, the scene manager has proven to be incredibly useful. This lets you access all of the different scenes in your preset. Using that same target feature, we can select, say, for instance, the cab and see which of these cabs are selected on each of my different scenes. This has been just absolutely mind-blowing and it's so fast for the workflow. Okay, downsides. I still think this is one of the best modelers on the market, but it's not quite the perfect pedal that I thought it was previously. Take this as you will, but this is just my experience after owning the unit for two weeks and really diving into it, playing around with it quite a lot. If any of this is user error, please honestly just tell me. I've only been using the pedal for two weeks. It's guaranteed that some things I'm just not gonna get at this point. So the main downside that I've come across is gonna be the support for basses. Yes, there are a bunch of different amp models for bass and cabinet models and even some dry pedals and stuff, but there aren't any bass centered factory presets. And you know, they really show you that they don't really care about bass anywhere near as much as guitar. I mean, you've got like what, 50, 70 presets that are all designed for big, heavy, ambient, synthy pad guitar sounds and not a single one for bass. It definitely feels like bass is something of an afterthought with the fractal units, but it is what it is. I ought to say, I'm not saying that this pedal can't do bass at all. There are obviously tons of bass players using this to great effect. I'm just saying that it's quite intimidating coming into it even on guitar when you've got tons of factory presets. It's 10 times more intimidating coming in on bass when there's nothing geared towards you. This is especially telling if you're coming from one of the Helix units, for instance. They're very evenly matched between guitar and bass, so you can get up and running quite easily regardless of what you're using. Another Somewhat major downfall to a lot of people, but not so important to me, is going to be the pitch shifting algorithms. Now, I sort of already knew they were going to be a little bit weak after watching Zach Seif's video on it recently, but I wasn't quite expecting them to be as poor as they are. Pitch shifter can be pretty disappointing, but I've got the option of running the Line 6 HX1 in the effects loop of the FM3 and use that for the pitch shifting instead. Another minor issue is going to be based on the foot switches themselves. The foot switches on the unit can have two different functions, one assigned to tapping the button and one assigned to holding the button. There is an inherent problem with this. The unit doesn't know if you're tapping the button until you let go of it. So for instance, I set up all of the scene changes on the tap buttons. I found myself lagging because I expected it to change the scene as my foot went down, but it changed it when it came up. This means that you've either got to be really precise about when you're lifting your foot, or you've got to quickly mash the button as fast as you can. Now, both of these feel quite counterintuitive to me, but I guess that's you know the price that you pay when you want to have the tap features and the hold features. I think I'd be tempted to grab an external controller so that I can just use the tap functions for important time-based switching things like scenes, for instance. Okay, sorry for the camera audio here, but foot switch one is a simple toggle that goes between the clean and the main rhythm. Foot switch two is a match of that, but it's also got additional functions on the hold feature. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, this could just be me. This could just be something that you get used to over time, and I'm just not used to it yet. So, you know, take that as you will. I think the main issue that's been bugging me is when I change to a preset, it sometimes won't properly load. I'm always connected to FM3 Edit, so that may be why, and it may be different if you're not connected to the USB, but I've definitely had some issues. For instance, I keep loading up my preset and finding it to be like five decibels too loud. I'll change scene up, change scene back down again, and it will be back to the right volume. I've also noticed on a lot of the factory presets, I'll load them up and I'll have no dry signal whatsoever. It will just be the delay and reverb trails. Then I, you know, scene up, scene back down, everything's fine. Strange quirk. <laughs> had a couple of minor freezes as well, where the unit just basically locks up for a minute. This has been very rare. I've had this maybe once or twice in two weeks, and I do a quite a lot of editing and preset management stuff that you really won't be doing unless you're diving in deep with it at home, and it's not something you have to worry about live. Okay, ran over. Before we get into my preset build, I just want to say, if you're enjoying this video, please drop me a like, drop me a subscribe, drop me a comment letting me know what you think. It all goes a long way towards helping me out. I built a preset for my last video, so I've decided to build another one for this video. This one is more heavily focused towards the high gain tones with a single clean tone peppered in. I'm using the 5153 Blue for all of the rhythms, the AC20 Treble for the cleans, and the PVH 6160 Plus lead for all of the lead tones. The cab I'm running in this is a custom IR I created with the Miko 2 plugin. I made this one specifically for this preset. I've incorporated a few of the sort of tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way into this preset. I've used the Leon Todd block library for the delay. I've used Leon Todd's sort of delay and reverb in parallel trick. I guess that's not really Leon Todd's thing, but that's where I saw it. So I'm just going to call it that. I've used Cooper Carter's whammy trick so that it auto engages without starting on sort of 5% sounding all weird and quirky. And yeah, it's all working really nicely in this one. I won't go full block by block on this preset because this video is already gonna run nice and long, but let's just play through each of the scenes and show you what's going on. Let's wrap this up into a nice conclusion. The screen stuff that went on sucks. It's not fun, but it is what it is. We're through it now, we're onto the other side, and hopefully no more issues. It's what you get for buying used. I definitely should have bought a new one, especially since I'm now over the price of what a new one would cost me. Also, if I had bought a new one, I would still be in warranty, which yes, now worries me. The more time I spend with the Fractal FM3, the more I enjoy it, which is really something that you want with a new piece of gear. That honeymoon phase never really phases out when you've got so much stuff to play with. In fact, I would wager that maybe 1% of Fractal users have mastered the unit. It truly does feel like there is always more learning to be done, and I really love that. It's a lot of fun. I think the next thing I want to learn is going to be templates. I always add the same sort of things into a preset. It's going to be a drive pedal, an amp, a cab, a reverb, a delay, and some kind of modulation. Having them already booted up into a preset would be really handy when I'm building one from scratch. There's still 
still a bunch of things I want to experiment with in the FM3, one of them being the pitch follower block, where it affects only the highest pitch, so you can have a highly saturated solo tone with reverb and delay on the higher notes, and then a big chunky rhythm tone that's completely dry on the lower notes without having to tweak anything on the unit. Sounds like it'll be fun. I also want to play around with some MIDI, especially with the Line 6 HX1 in the loop of the FM3, just to see what they sort of do when they're paired together. To wrap up the conclusion, I stand by my previous review of the unit. The FM3 is absolutely fantastic. The only real issues that I've had, outside of the screen stuff, have been firmware based, and Fractal are hot on it with the updates, more so than any other company I've ever seen. So I've got good faith that these will be sorted out soon. <laughs> That's everything that I've got for this video, so thank you so much for watching. If you didn't catch my first impressions of the Fractal FM3, there's a link on screen for you to watch that one now. That's all for this one, I've been Kai.